With all that's been happening in Grindavik, I wanted to try to help people understand how cracking is a result of the magma intrusion and the lava extrusion onto the surface of the earth. So we're in the lab today. I've got a sandbox and we have a special device in here where we're going to increase the pressure simulating the magma intruding into the rock, building up in a magma chamber underground. And as that magma pressure builds up, the gas pressure also builds up. And the gases, they can actually get into small cracks in the rock and they will actually expand those cracks and grow them. And when a crack grows underground, it results in a small earthquake. And we can see that in the footage from Grindavik that there are earthquakes preceding the magma extrusion onto the ground surface. And so you also see the ground rising up and then ultimately cracks forming on the ground surface. Now, not all those cracks result in magma coming up and extruding as lava onto the surface. Some of them don't get activated that way. And today we're going to see how that happens. So I've got a inner tube underground and I'm going to pump it up. Let's watch the trees. The trees are going to indicate the ground motion a little bit. We'll see the ground surface from the camera if any cracks start to form. So I'm going to pump it up nice and slowly. All right, I can already see a little bit of ground heaving in the middle there. All right, there's a small crack forming. This tree's moving and that tree's, this tree's moving. Oh, we've got a nice long split all the way along. Thankfully, this is out in the countryside, so there's no homes affected. Now, fortunately, there's a small hole in the inner tube, so that releases the pressure. And that's what happens underground as well. Once we have some cracks opened and the gases can escape, the pressure drops again. So you actually see that in the ground deformation. The ground deformation rises up, and then we have a drop, and that's some cracks opening on the surface. Then the pressure starts to build up again because the magma that's underground will seal up those cracks from the magma chamber. And then we have to make new cracks, new pathways for that magma to start extruding to the surface. So then the pressure starts to build up again. We make new cracks and you can see cracks splaying off of the existing crack. So we have one crack we've activated again. It's opening up again, but we also see new cracks forming. And if that pressure really builds up, you may even start to see deep down, you know, those deep cracks. We saw water in them in Grindavik and then ultimately some lava extruding out through these fissures. So you see this nice linear fissure. That's because the cracking in Grindavik, the fissures and the volcanic activity is because of a spreading center. It's like the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. It's opening up, we're creating new crust, and then it's filling in with new rocks, and then the process will repeat again in different locations. So it actually may move up to the north in Grindavik or the south down into the town. What we need to follow is the seismic activity, where the earthquake's happening, those are because of the cracks underground, and where is the ground surface starting to rise, and that's an indicator of the location for a new eruption.